Hey, what's up? I'm Steve. Welcome back to Sharpen. Today I've got another one on Capture One and specifically talking about one of my absolute favorite features that it offers, skin tone. So let's dive in. Here we go, skin tone. This was one of my top five favorite things about Capture One and why I thought it was better than Lightroom. If you haven't checked out that video, go ahead, hit the description. I've also done another one on color adjustments. Check that out as well. And if you wanna know what my other absolute favorite feature is, make sure you subscribe, hit the bell, so that that way you won't miss when we talk about tethering. That is by far the best function and feature why I moved over to Capture One. So uh, you don't wanna miss that one. Now, today what I wanna do is I wanna show you some examples, uh, a couple of portraits, on how I use skin tone. And then I also wanna show you an unexpected way to use skin tone. So make sure you stick around for that towards the end where I show you how you use it on something besides what its intended use was for. Here we are, headshot, portrait, whatever you wanna call it. It's a headshot, right? Environmental portrait. And I wanna show you how we're gonna use the skin tone feature. First, let me just show you a quick before and after. This is before and after. So just some basic global adjustments here. Her skin doesn't look bad at all, but again, this is just for illustrative purposes. We're gonna come over here to the color tab at the top, come down to the color editor section, and we're gonna go right over here to skin tone. Now this works very similarly to advanced or even an eyedropper for your white balance. You just have a little sampler here and you just pick a spot. Now you can always change what you pick after the fact, but here I'm just gonna click and it gives me a selection. Now, what I wanna first do is go to the view selected color range. Basically, show me the color mask. Show me what I just selected, desaturate everything else. So when I do that, you'll see it's desaturated everything else. And it's giving me a pretty broad range. There's a lot of yellow in there, a good amount of red in there, and a ton of orange. Obviously, orange is gonna be for your skin tone. So what I'm first gonna do is start to bring back this smoothness so the feathering is tightened up a little bit so it doesn't include too much information. The next one I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start to refine this by dragging these sliders. I really don't want a whole lot of yellow in there and I don't want a whole lot of red in there. And the reason why I don't want red is because I don't wanna unify the lips or in this case, she's got really rosy cheeks. I don't wanna unify, I don't want that all to be the same color. Here you can see now her lips are gray, which is what I want because that means they're not included and her cheeks are getting to be a little bit gray as well. So that's great. So now it looks like I've got a pretty good selection here. And now I can start manipulating this. So this is where it gets super, super cool. First, what I'm gonna actually gonna start with underneath the uniformity, we're gonna head up to a mountain in just a second, but underneath uniformity, I'm gonna drag the saturation all the way up. And you can see what it does is it kind of neutralizes everything, right? There are no overly saturated or hot spot saturated areas on her face. I'm gonna do the same thing now with hue. And here you can see I've basically made all of her skin the same color. Now you might say, well, Steve, that's not realistic. I would never do that. And that's okay. You don't have to do that. And maybe if you were doing something as a more, I don't know, editorial fine art portrait, you might wanna do that. In this case, for a headshot, I probably wouldn't do that either. But here is really where it gets cool is when you drag this lightness slider. This is essentially like a dodge and burn. I'm gonna drag it all the way over again. And you can see, it flattens her out. It doesn't look good. This doesn't look good at all. And also, let me uncheck this so we can really see it with the rest of the portrait. That doesn't look great. She looks a little too cartoony, which for stylistic purposes, maybe you wanna do that. But here, no, I definitely don't. Let's dial all these back to about 75-ish or 60-ish percent here. That's looking a little bit better. And maybe I'll bring this lightness all the way down. No, I'll keep it up a little bit here. This is where it gets really cool is that I can do this very quick dodge and burn to just smooth things out. I don't have to do real retouching on this. For portraits that you wanna look real natural, but you wanna just give them a little bit of polish, this is a great tool. So let's see a quick before and after of what we just did here. I'm gonna hold the option key, click on this little curved arrow, before, after. So you can see what it's done is it's unified and you know remove those overly saturated spots on her skin there, but what it's also done is it's included a little bit of the background, right? A little bit of the environment because it picked up those same colors. One of the really cool things about Capture One, and I'm making a video in the future, so again, hit that subscribe, hit that bell when we talk about layers. But here, let's just talk a little bit about the layers and then let's see how we could use it because what I can do is I can take basically any adjustment that you make in Capture One, add it to a layer, add it to a mask, and then modify it. All right, so we'll make a new filled adjustment layer. Let's name this skin. We're gonna head over to our skin tone. We're gonna sample right about in the same area. Then let's view that selected color range, bring our smoothness down. Maybe I'll fast forward this a little bit. Good. 
Now I have everything on its own layer, so I can do a before and after just by checking that layer. Now the other thing that I didn't talk about before I do the masking, the other thing I didn't talk about was the amount here. So you have some control over, well, do I wanna move the hue of the skin tone, right? So if I slide it over here all the way to the right, you can see I'm introducing some more greens and yellows, and if I slide it all the way to the left, I'm getting a little bit more red magenta. If you wanna reset any slider in Capture One, double click on the little slider, and that resets it. Same thing here, if I wanna increase some saturation because maybe I wanna give her a little bit more of a tan and I wanna bring this lightness down a smidge here, you know, boom, instant tan. And let's do a before and after there. The reason why I wanted to put this on a layer was because I wanna remove it. Specifically, it's picking up a little bit here in her teeth, I think, and then also some of this background. So if I hit the M key, what it's gonna do is it's gonna show me a mask. So now all I need to do is grab my eraser tool, hit the E key, and I'm just gonna start erasing it from the areas where I know it was showing up. Now I can be really sloppy with the, this adjustment because it's really only picking up on the things that are orange. And in this case, as long as I don't erase from her face, I know that I'm gonna have a fine selection here. So I'm gonna turn the mask off and let's zoom in a little bit here. I'm gonna use my bracket keys to adjust the size or I can right click and adjust the size of my brush. You can see what it's done, especially with the saturation on her face, right? Everything is really nice and even. She still has rosy cheeks, she still has rosy lips, like everything is, is there. I'd feel much more comfortable delivering this, you know, out of camera, right? With some global adjustments and a skin tone adjustment for something that would be a very natural portrait. Obviously, if this was her in the same environment and I was delivering five or 10 photos, I can copy and paste just about all of those adjustments aside from the custom masking, and then I'd be done. So no need to pop into Photoshop and really do all of the masking, hue saturation adjustment layers that you would need to do as at least I previously have done. Okay, next, let's take a look at a lot of skin. So here we go. Uh, this is again before and after, just some basic global adjustments, but let's go ahead and apply our skin tone adjustment here. I click on here and I'm just gonna try to find a bit of a middle area. Now again, you can always adjust it after the fact. I like to view my selected color range. Let's start pulling out these yellows, which in this case is that green juice that he's drinking there. And I'm gonna drop down my smoothness just to really make sure I'm only refining what I want. I can always feather it out after the fact. And I wanna start pulling this back until his lips get removed. Now if I wanted to, I could neutralize the whole thing have it on a layer, mask out his lips after the fact to bring back that rosy red if I wanted to. I really just wanna neutralize those oranges so that they're not overly saturated. That's really the biggest feature for this, for me anyway. So when I drag this all the way over to the right, that's really what does a lot of that unification. And the hue, we can also slide that over, and then the lightness. Now here, I wanna maintain the definition that he has because you'll see if I drag this way over, yep, it's gonna just flat. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like a cartoon. It's gonna flatten it right out. This one I wanna be a little bit cautious with because again, think of it kind of like a mid-global dodge and burn. And then the saturation as well. Is that maybe too saturated? Do I wanna pull that back a little bit? Maybe something like this. So this would be a before and after. I'm gonna hold the option key and click. Before and after. Before and after. Maybe I pulled out a little bit too much saturation there, I think. Again, you might argue to me, well, Steve, this doesn't look natural. I would never do this. Good point, don't do it. So in this case, I wanna just show you the power of this tool. Within a few clicks, I was able to neutralize a lot of skin all at once. Okay, so if you stuck around with me for this long, I wanna show you how you'd use this tool not on skin at all. Have you ever found yourself in a situation landscape maybe, where you have some grass in front of you and a little bit's yellow, a little bit's green, maybe too green, maybe neutral green. And wouldn't it be cool if you could just kind of get everything in the same color space? Or in this case, I've got some ivy behind a portrait and there's a little bit of oranges in there. There's some blues, some greens, maybe a little bit of yellows. I want to just neutralize all of that like this. Also, yes, in this case, I've colorized her dress. I plan on making a separate, much shorter video to show you how you can colorize anything in Capture One. But let's go to the other shot and let me walk you through how I would do this. We're gonna to come to the image, and in this case, uh, before and after is gonna reveal nothing. So we're starting from scratch here. Let's start with a new filled adjustment layer. 
and we're gonna head over to skin tone and we're gonna click on that's right the ivy not skin tone at all because it really doesn't care what color you select the only thing to keep in mind is that your controls are a little bit limited so you can't really push and pull too too much here but what it's gonna do very well is this uniformity so if I start dragging that over you can see immediately the result that I'm getting from that So the green's looking good, but I still have a little bit of that orange that I want to take care of. So I'm going to make a new filled adjustment layer. Now in this case, I'm going to use advanced because that's going to give me a little bit more control. I'm going to target those oranges, view that selected color range. I'm going to ignore, well, I'm going to get rid of the dress because I don't really want the dress in there. And I'm going to ignore her skin tone and the effect that this has. Because it's on an adjustment layer, I can just mask it however I want. Now again, uh, I would be hard pressed to see you do this in Lightroom only without multiple pins with a ton of adjustments because to the best of my knowledge, Lightroom has not updated to allow you to use any of the color editing controls or all of the color editing controls on layers that they have now. There's still a limited tool set that you have on there, whereas in Capture One, you could load anything into multiple layers. So let's call this green Pull that green ivy we're gonna come back here to this orange to green and let's pop back and yep we're gonna slide that all the way over it and that just about does it right there now again I'm gonna hit my mask my M key and what I want to do is I want to just paint around or just outside of the area what I want to do is I want to erase basically any of this area down here where I don't want those oranges being affected. Something like this. Let's pop on a quick crop for this. Something like that. And here's a before and after. Before and after. So I'm really happy with this result and it's pretty awesome that I didn't have to go to Photoshop for any of it. So hopefully after watching this video, you've realized that the skin tone control is super powerful in Capture One. Not only by itself, just with a few clicks, but when you combine it with layers and when you start using it on things other than just skin tones, combined with multiple layers, advanced adjustment layers, and just overall global corrections, this is a really powerful tool. So thank you for sticking around. If you have thoughts, questions, comments, feedback, please pop it down below and grab a set of images, download the trial of Capture One, load them in there and just play around with it. See what it looks like. Again, for me, there is no real comparison in Lightroom because it just doesn't exist. I figured out how to do it with multiple layers in Photoshop and it's still just not as easy. And it's just not the same result that you get in Capture One. Clearly the people at Capture One are thinking about portrait photographers when they made this tool. Hit subscribe, hit that bell. We're making more videos, colorized things in Capture One, that tether video is coming up. And then we're also gonna make one just dedicated on layers in Capture One. We'll see you then.